Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the singleton pattern and the singleton pattern is a design pattern where you have a class and you, you only allow one instance to be created of that class. You only allow one object to be created from that class. And the singleton pattern is um, is kind of controversial because a lot of people say it introduces global variables by the back door because once you've got that uh, one object of your class using the singleton pattern it turns out that you can then access it access that one object from anywhere in your code and um, of course that's potentially dangerous and confusing and uh, you have to be careful and, and decide where you're gonna use your singleton instance really you have to make a decision about it and some people say it shouldn't be used at all in fact because of because of this so uh, a classic example would be a database class and if you've done any android programming then um, usually in, in android you, you have like uh, the things that your phone does or your android system does are divided into activities and um, and any one of them that uses a database would have its own database object, typically. And that's that's a, a perfectly good way to tackle this problem. If you've got a database object or any object and you want to use it in multiple places in your program, you can just create it somewhere and then pass it around to where you need it. Uh, and in fact, w uh, often, um, for example, w or with a database object, often you, you really only want to use it in one place anyway and um, you, you would use like the observer pattern uh, to listen to classes let's say that required the database like if, if a class needs to use a database it would fire a, an event which would tell some listening class to then do something with the database rather than using the database itself but anyway nevertheless let's supposing that you do you want you do want to have uh, for example, a database object, and you want to use that potentially in multiple places in your code, but you only want to have one object of that class, then this is how you could handle it. You can use the singleton pattern. So I'll create a class called database in my model package here. And the reason why a database is such a good example of this is that uh, if you have a class like this that handles connecting and disconnecting to a database and then encapsulates a database connection you, you don't want to have two of those objects floating around because then you will have multiple connections open to your database and usually you only want to have one connection open by your program so this uh, singleton pattern is a good example of that because it will it will enforce only having one object which all your various classes can then use so I've got my database class here and let's say I want to use it in this view class for example what I would do if I didn't have a singleton would be I'd say database db and this could well be a private instance variable of course database db equals new database and the disadvantage of this is that I could do that anywhere in, in my code I could create a new database object anywhere and then I'd potentially be opening and closing multiple connections which might not be good at all. So how can I just force there to only be one of these objects? And the way I do it is, firstly, uh, let's give this a constructor, public database. Now in languages like Java, which allow you to have private constructors, you can actually declare the constructor private, and that prevents anyone doing new on your class anywhere uh, anywhere basically except within the class itself so to start with if we're using a language like Java which allows private constructors and some languages don't then for your singleton pattern you might want to give it a private constructor and that will prevent people from doing new on your class other than where you allow it to happen so let's comment this out and where, where are we going to create this database object? And the answer is in the database class. And the way we do it is we have a private 
static database private variable called instance. So we have a class variable, static variable, called instance of the type of the class itself. And we initialize that here, so we say equals new database, and that's the only place in the code where we'll do new on this class. And then finally, so that that can be accessed from outside the class, we give it a public database get instance. And of course, if you're not dealing with a database, then you'll have a different class name in here, because this isn't anything to do with databases. I'm just using this as an example. So we have a public static, in fact, database get instance that returns that static uh, instance reference to the one and only database object. And this is a singleton pattern. And to use that in view, for example, we can now do database db equals the class database dot, dot get instance. And um, now, instead of constructing new databases wherever we, we want to use this in the code, we're just getting the one and only reference that there is to that database. And that's created right here. Now this is uh, this is one way to do singleton, and it's generally the recommended way these days. Uh, this used to be done usually in a different way, and the way it used to be done, uh, and still sometimes is, is like this. You'd have your public static database get instance, and you'd have your private um, variable, private static database, let's call this uh, db, because I can't use the same name again. Let's, actually, maybe let's call this get instance old, and then I can call this instance old. So this is the old way of doing it. And um, then we'll say here, if instance old is equal to null, then instance old equals new database. And then finally we can do return instance old. Let's save that. And this is called lazy instantiation uh, because the, the act of creating a new object is called instanti instantiation. And this is lazy instantiation because it doesn't happen until the last possible moment. Until someone calls get instance old uh, there's no instance of database here. There's no instance of your singleton class. But once they call that for the first time, at that point it's actually created. And from then on, instance all will no longer be null. And this won't happen. It will simply return that instance. And this is uh, sometimes a good idea, especially if for some reason you want to, you don't want your class to be constructed when your program starts. Let's say that for some reason that will just take too long. You want to speed up the startup of your program and uh, for some reason want to construct some, I don't know, massive class or something, some massive object later on. Uh, then you can defer creation of it until get instance is, is called. So that was um, part of the thinking behind this old way of doing it. But one disadvantage is that this is, this is not thread safe, whereas this probably is. Because um, here, what could happen is that one thread could call get instance, and uh, it'll say, okay, instance is null. And then a second thread could call get instance, and it finds instance is null. And then the first thread creates a new instance. And the second thread, which checked if it was null before the first one had got round to creating a new instance, the second thread then also creates a new instance. So now you've got two instances floating around. So uh, this, this old way of doing it is not thread safe, uh, whereas this is, as far as I can see anyway. So that's why people have drifted towards this a bit. And now you can do this anywhere in your code, which is a disadvantage in many ways, uh, because it is like a global variable. And um, one what I like to do with it here is um, I want to connect and disconnect from my database. So you can then proceed and add um, some methods to your class. So let's say, for example, we could have a public void connect, and that will probably throw an exception or something. But for the moment, I'll just call it 
connect and I'll put in here connected to database and we could have a disconnect public void disconnect and let's say sysout disconnected just for the moment disconnected and uh, where are we going to actually do this well there's, there's really three ways of handling this one way is that every time you do a query you could connect and disconnect and that's going to be suitable um, this this is nothing to do with singleton by the way but just to uh, finish this database stuff one one um, one typical example of that would be if you're connecting to some really little lightweight local database like a SQLite database that just puts its data in a single file for one user for example which is common with Android programming then you could connect before a query and disconnect afterwards if, if the connection connecting to a database is going to happen in no time at all then you may as well connect and disconnect liberally but if you're connecting to some remote database you might want to connect when your program starts up and disconnect when the program closes and for that reason here here in Swing, I added a window adapter as a window listener. And then when a window opens, I can say, well, I could use this here. I could use my DB. But another great thing that, um, that Singleton allows you to do is you can use method chaining. And I can say database.getInstance.connect now. And down here, I can say database get instance whether you do get instance every time or just once up front just depends really on how many times you need to use it if, if you only need to do like uh, if you only need to get the reference to the instance like a couple of times you may as well do it like this but if you if you have to call methods of your singleton this should be disconnect repeatedly then you probably want to get the reference to it up front like this and then you can just say db dot connect db db.disconnect so now if I run my program it connects when a window opens and disconnects when it closes and the third possibility is to use connection pooling which um, uh, is, is, is pretty easy to do in using servlets and JSPs and I think for Swing there's something called I think it's called C3PO like the robot in Star Wars, in Star Wars but I've never used it so I don't know but uh, connection pooling where you you just grab a connection from a pool and use it and then don't worry about it anymore because it'll be it will remain in the pool anyway is uh, is a really great way to handle it if you, if you don't mind going to the trouble of setting that up so the essence of the singleton pattern is uh, it's when you want to have just one object and you might want to use it in multiple places and you have this private instance variable you have a method to retrieve it and you create the instance within the class itself usually you make the constructor private if you can which you can in Java you give it whatever methods you want and then when you use it you can say class name dot get instance dot such and such to call the methods or you can retrieve the methods up front with get instance sorry you can retrieve the uh, reference up front the instance with get instance and then use it like db dot connect or whatever for example so that's a singleton. It is a bit controversial and some people refuse, refuse to use it, but um, I find it is sometimes quite handy. And that's it for this tutorial. I'll put this code on caveofprogramming.com or you'll be able to find a um, some kind of link to it there anyway. And until next time, happy coding.